Okay. How many is ready for the word this morning? Okay. Praise God. Praise God. I, I have a thought of this morning that I, I want to I want to deal with, and I won't hold you long. Um, there was something that happened while I was in Chattanooga at our uh, at our home church with Pastor Ron. Um, we have a pastors council meeting uh, on Wednesday afternoon after. Uh, the services on Wednesday morning and what this pa pastors council meeting does is it uh, allows pastors from all over the country to come into this meeting we have lunch and then these pastors can ask questions uh, of Pastor Ron and he has uh, folks like Dwayne Miller Rabbi Kurt Landry uh, was there and and uh, many many others on this council and one of the uh, questions this year was what is the number one area of ministry that you struggle with continuously what is the number one area of ministry that you struggle with continuously every person on the panel said it was praise and worship in the big churches in the little churches it was praise and worship and I said the same thing I said one word really wow you see maybe some of y'all are thinking well it, it must be maybe money problem no nope, money's not a problem it's praise and worship would you like to know why I'm going to show you today there's a thought of my heart where there's a there's a phrase in a insurance uh, legal ease and and it's called the West Encyclopedia of America law there's a phrase in there that is called acts of God how many of you have ever heard the phrase acts of God if you have a homeowner if you have a house or you have a car there's some fine print in your policy that talks about we will not cover anything that is considered acts of God and the legal interpretation is this it's an event that directly and exclusively results from the occurrence of a natural cause that could not be that could not have been prevented by the exercise of foresight or caution it is an inevitable accident inevitable means no matter what you're going to do ain't nothing gonna stop it it's an inevitability I like the way that comes off my mouth <laughs> say inevitable. inevitable it's inevitable courts have recognized various events as acts of God such as tornadoes earthquakes death extraordinarily high tides violent winds and floods Legally, many insurance policies for property damage exclude from their protection damaged caused by acts of God. Today, stand with me. We're going to look at the spiritual implication of acts of God. Turn your Bible with me to Psalm 66. Psalm 66. We're going to begin reading verse 1 through verse 4. For those of you who are still flipping, it's in the Old Testament, left of center. We've taken the liberty of putting it on the media for you as well. This is the New King James Version. And it says this, verse 60, uh, excuse me, Psalm 66, verse 1 through verse 4. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Now, the King James Version uh, should bless some of you, especially those of you who don't know how to sing. Because the King James Version says, make a joyful noise. <laughs> That's amen or oh me. But the translation, the Hebrew translation of that word noise is actually the word that means shout. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth, verse 2, sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works, a.k.a. acts. How awesome are your works through the greatness of your power. Your enemies shall submit themselves to you. 
all the earth shall worship you and sing praise to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Here's a Hebrew word. You need to learn it. It is called Selah. It is the word that means pause, stop, meditate on this, and let what I just said sink in. So let's do it again from verse 1. Make a joyful shout to God. All the earth. Somebody shout. You can. Amen. If you want to. Hallelujah. Amen. Make a joyful shout to God. All the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. And make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name, Selah. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our hearts and in our lives. Father, we pray that you would get glory and honor in all that we do today. We ask you, Lord, to open up our eyes for us to see and our ears for us to hear. Open up our hearts for us to receive what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shouted, amen and amen. Shake your neighbor's hand and you may be, dismi- uh, uh, you may be seated this morning if you can. I almost said dismissed. Some of y'all came in here dismissed, didn't you? The word shout here is a word in the Hebrew that means to raise a sound, to cry out, and to give a blast. You can shout a war cry or an alarm for battle. You can shout a signal to march. You can even shout victory over your enemies. Mm. You can shout in applause. With religious impulse, that's what this means. Y'all ever been in a service where the Holy Spirit just move upon you and you just want to shout? You say things like, glory, amen. That is shouting with impulse. And it also means to cry out in distress. Now, I was raised in a church, and probably many of you have. You have to understand a little bit about my, uh, a little bit about my background. My dad is Catholic. My mom is Pentecostal, and I was raised Baptist. There's just two words for me, jacked up. I was raised in a church that when you would come to the altar, half of the crowd would say, just let go and let God. The other half of the crowd would say, hang on. I was confused. You go to some churches and, 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 and they're dancing and shouting and they've got the flags and the dancers and, and the praise team. And then you go to other churches and, and, and there's an organ player and, and a six-foot icicle standing behind the pulpit. And it's as dead as last year's corn crop. You know what I'm talking about. For those of you that don't know me, I used to travel all over the country. I've sang in every, my family, the Bates family, we've sang in every denomination on the planet. Us in a Catholic church was interesting. If you're Catholic here today, that's okay. Don't sweat it. I got you. I'm not making fun. I pick on my dad a lot. We have some interesting conversations. There is something to a spiritual shout. There's something to it. Your Bible says, shout to the Lord all the earth. Make a joyful shout unto the Lord. It also says that we are singing praise. Now, this word praise, if you were here with me last week, we talked about worship and how to release the fire and the glory of God. We know that the fire of God is the supernatural manifestation of his presence in you. But we also know that the fire cannot come unless the glory of God is accompanying, is accompanying the fire. You don't get fire without glory. And the glory of God is the abundance and the riches and the reputation and everything that comes with fire. 
And we know that the way you activate the fire and the glory of God. Remember Solomon, he, he had genuine worship. It was real worship. It was real repentance. It was real rejoicing. The word worship there is stating facts about God. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my salvation. All of these things you see on our banners, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah uh, uh, Rapha, Jehovah uh, Jireh, all these things, uh, that's who he is. Those are facts about God. That is worship. That is worship. When you praise God, you are telling God how good it is the, it is the word uh, that means in, in, in common language, you're telling, good, you're telling God how good he did what you're praising him for. In other words, you are telling him of the quality of the deeds that are attributed to himself. You are praising him and telling him, good job, high five. When you saved me, you saved me completely. Because you saved me, I am healed, I am delivered, I am made prosperous, I am forgiven, I am made whole. I experienced the shalom with nothing broken and nothing missing. Because, and I began to brag on God. That's praise. That is, it is bragging on God. You know how you brag on your kids? They make it to three and it's like, woo! One, two, three, woo! Yay! Then they make it to ten, woo! Then they learn how to do it in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. I'm good at five. I'm done. Everybody, woo! That's praise. Everything loves praise. You praise your dog long enough, he'll sit down without giving you a treat, without you having to give him a treat. I got a little, this is, this is God's truth. I got a little beagle. She's just been with us a month. She was beat severely before she came to us. That little beagle didn't know her name. She does now because every time we say it, there's a treat in her hand. Livy, ears perk up. Livy means food. <laughs> so here she comes. Livy also means sit. You didn't know that? This dog thinks her name means sit because as soon as we say, Livy, come, she'll come, she sees the food, and she didn't at first. We had to teach her. And every time she would sit, even if we had to make her do it, we would praise her. Yay! Good Livy, good girl. Good Livy, good Livy, good Livy. And she never looked once at our face unless we held the treat right here. <laughs> so it's good Livy, good girl, good girl. And then one day, all we had to do was say, Livy, come. And we went over to where the treats was. We had our hand in the box. We didn't have nothing out yet. And guess what? We turned around, and there's little Livy sitting there with her tail wagging. She knows what's coming because we praised her in the little things. And she was responsive to praise. That has nothing to do with what I'm telling you today. <laughs> or does it? Because praise is telling God how good he did what you're worshiping him for. You're bragging on God. See, when you brag on God, it initiates acts of God. It's not worship, it's praise. And there's a difference. It may be a fact that God is awesome at what he does, but he lives in the bragging of his people. He, the Bible says he inhabits the praise of his people. God lives in praise. God lives at the corner of worship and praise. Right there, big house. He's got a big fence. You can't even get on God's property until you go through the gate of thanksgiving. Yeah. So you're thankful. And then you, you enter his gates with thanksgiving and then into his courts with what? And then the next passage of scripture says, for the Lord is good. Fact, worship. See, you, you just can't come in to worship. There's a formula. It's Thanksgiving plus praise equals worship. Actually, it's Thanksgiving plus praise plus worship equals church. 
That's when, it, it's when it's good. That's when you leave here and you don't even realize it's been two hours. Here's something. I asked God one day, I said, Lord, we, I'm tired. These people won't leave. I said, why? And the Lord said, because it's the created in the presence of the creator. And they don't want to leave. Not you, me. I said, then lock up. I'm headed to the house. Something happens when we get the created into the presence of the creator. Amen. So, shouting is raising a sound. It is a cry or an alarm for battle. It is a signal to march. It is a, a shout of victory over our enemies. We can shout in our applause. We can shout with religious impulse. We can even shout out a cry in distress. But when we praise, we are singing a song or a hymn telling of the quality of deeds attributed to God. But then when we sing, this is interesting to me because the word sing here in the Hebrew means sing praise, sing bragging. Ooh. Or to make music. There's a Hebrew translation that talks about with your fingers as though you're playing the guitar or the piano or a harp or We don't clap at our church. You're not there today. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And when we do that, here's what happens. Let's go back to the, uh, the passage of Scripture. Say to God, He is awesome. Facts. Bragging on Him. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies submit themselves to you. When we learn how to sing praise, when we learn how to activate an act of God, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. Verse 4, all the earth shall worship you. All the earth shall state facts about you. And all the earth shall brag on you through song. They shall sing bragging songs, praises, bragging songs to your name. Stop and think about that. Whoo, Selah. That's powerful. The New Testament application of this is very simple. If you have your Bible and you want to go with me, go to Acts chapter 16. While you're flipping there, you'll know the story of Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas entered the town. They're preaching Jesus. They got beat for it. They were falsely accused. Jesus, when, you, when it's a genuine move of God and you're a genuine minister of the gospel, you'll pay a price. Your reputation will be at stake. Your, your, uh, your fame will be at stake. Uh, people's going to talk about you. People's going to falsely accuse you. Uh, people's going to do everything they can to get you to shut your mouth. But I want you to know a real, a real minister of the gospel will not let the outward effects affect what's going on inside of them. Oh, you're going to take some bumps and bruises. Watch this. Acts chapter 16. If you have your Bibles, go there with me. I want to show you something. We're talking about how to activate the acts of God. I'm going to tie this all in together here in just a minute. Verse 23. And when they had laid many stripes on them, these were, uh, uh, Paul and Silas was being beat. That's what the stripes mean. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer, to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet to the stocks. I need to tell you real quick what the inner prison is. There is a such a thing as a jail cell. But when you are locked up in the inner prison, they don't only put you in the jail cell, they put you in the stocks and the chains in the middle of the jail cell. So you are locked up in the inner prison. There are many of us who have gone through that experience in our life where we think we are losing our mind and we are locked up within ourselves. I don't have time to preach that. I got to stay right here. But I could. So your Bible says, verse 24, 5, 25, but at midnight, y'all say midnight. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns 
to God. Wait a minute. They were praying and singing hymns. It's the biblical definition of praise. They were praying and praising. Watch. They were singing hymns to God. They were singing songs that brag on God to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26. Suddenly, y'all say suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Can you say amen? Now look. We think that it is the time that we focus on the time of midnight. I was studying this out, and Paul said it may have been midnight, but they wasn't singing a song just because it was midnight. They were singing a song about midnight. How do we know what song they were singing? Many Jewish theologians believe they were singing Psalms 19, 119. Verse 60 through 62. Here's what many Jewish theologians believe that Paul and Silas were singing that night. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Verse 61. Through the, though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will forget not your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. Can you say amen? They were not singing a song because it was midnight. They were singing a song about being at midnight. Can you say amen? They understood the power of prayer and praise. Here's something interesting. Your Bible says in Acts that other prisoners could hear them. They were listening. Do you know that there's people in your life that need you to open your mouth and pray something? There's people in your life that need you to open your mouth and praise something. There's people in your life that don't need you to focus on the stripes. They don't need you to focus on your bruises. They don't need you to focus on all the scars. They don't need you to focus on everything that has happened to you. They need you to open your mouth and praise something. They need you to open your mouth and praise someone. They need you to pray to God and to brag on him. What happens when you pray and praise and suddenly happens? Understand, when they begin to pray and praise and suddenly. And I I, I need to to stop right here. They were singing out of their mouth what was in their heart. It cannot come out of your mouth unless it's in your heart. Your Bible says from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You cuss every time something bad happens in your world. Oh, I can't believe I cuss. It's in your heart. It's coming out your mouth. It has to. Oh, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You go back to that same old, same old every time life gets a little stressed in your life. It's because it's in you. You've got to replace what's in you with the Word of God so that when the life gets hard, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is not a cuss word. It's not a habitual offense. It's a praise unto God. I got a pastor friend of mine. Every time he's, he, 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 uh, uh, I was with him and we were putting up this tent out in West Virginia and he hit his thumb with a hammer. And he said, oh, praise God. I said, what are you talking about? He said, what's the alternative? (laughs) It was in his heart, so it had to come out of his mouth. Your circumstances do not depict what comes out of your mouth. Your prayer time and your praise time controls all that. I don't know how much time you spend in the Word. I don't know how much time you spend praising Him in your private worship sessions, in your private prayer time. I don't know how much time you spend there, but what comes out of your mouth when life gets hard. This is good. I promise it is. I'm not beating you up. I'm trying to encourage you. If you're going to, if you're going to know how to enact the act of God, if you're going to learn how to initiate the acts of God, it only comes through prayer and praise. Some of y'all have been looking for and suddenly for so long, but all you do is talk about how bad things are. All you do is talk about your prison cell. 
All you do is talk about how you've been locked up. All you do is talk about all the, blo the blues and the bruises and the bloodshed and the scars and all the mess. I want you to know something. You've got to tell your mess that there's something inside of you that the mess cannot control, and that is prayer and praise. When you open your mouth in the middle of being locked down in solitude, in the middle of being locked up in that inner prison, being locked up in yourself, you need to open your mouth and praise something. You need to open your mouth and brag on God. You're not dead yet. And let the praises of God continually be in your mouth. Say amen. But pastor, you don't understand my circumstance. No, and I don't want to take the 20, uh, 20 hours it's going to take you to tell me. Here's what I know about your circumstance. It must bow at the name of Jesus. Well, I, I, I want a pastor that cares. I do. I care enough to tell you the truth. And here's the truth. Your circumstances do not control you. Yeah, but there is no yeah, but. Boy, I'm preaching good today. I did not intend to go here, but now that I'm here, scoot over. Let me in here for a minute. Paul and Silas were falsely accused. They knew they were. They could have had a conversation. Hey, Paul, you know, they beat us. We don't deserve to be in here. We don't, you know, uh, your bruises are, are, are uh, my bruises are worse than yours. And, 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 you know, you're having a bad time too. And is there anything I can do for you? No, Silas, I'm doing all right. I guess I, uh, these, these bruises on my feet will heal. These bruises on my back will heal. Man, my head hurts. And, and boy, they let us have it, didn't they? And we, I don't even know why we're here. We don't deserve to be here. And, and, and I can hear Paul, yeah, you're right. We don't deserve to be here. And can, 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 they didn't say that. You know what they did? They said, hey, you know what? This is as good a place as any to have a prayer and praise service. So let's go ahead and start right now because we're going to know that they, they might have bound us up in ropes, but at midnight, we're going to open our mouth and pray something. At midnight, we're going to sing praise. We're going to still brag on God because it's not what happened to us. It's what's happening through us that matters. You didn't see Paul and Silas having a pity party. You ever notice that when you throw a pity party, really three people show up? Me, myself, and I? You may have a friend or two show up and want to help confirm how miserable you are. But it always ends up with them being more miserable than you. I really wish you'd learn how to throw a praise party right in the middle of your captivity. But I'm going to show you something. Watch. They were praising God. They were praying and praising. And suddenly, verse 26, there was a great act of God. Isn't that what the insurance company says? An earthquake is considered. Y'all asleep at the wheel or is it just me in the house today? There was a great earthquake. Watch, this is important. So that the foundation of the prison was shaken. God is not interested in just loosening your binds. God is not interested in just opening up prison cells. God knows that through prayer and praise, the very foundation of that thing holding you captive crumbles so that what is holding you captive has no leverage on you anymore. The chains don't matter. The gates don't matter. The prison doors have nothing to hold on to, so they must fall down at your feet. God doesn't set you free from the chains. He destroys the foundations holding the chains together. Are you getting it? The reason why you keep dealing with addiction, the reason why you keep dealing with stuff is because you're not allowing prayer and praise to get into the foundation of a thing. You just keep dealing with the symptoms of a thing. God doesn't want to just heal you of the symptoms. He wants to get rid of the cause. And the cause is an evil foundation that has been laid against you. But when you find yourself in captivity, open your mouth and pray something. Open your mouth and pray something. Then God sends an act of God and shakes that very thing that is holding you captive and it losing this ability to hold you captive any longer. This is good. You, but your obligation is to pray and to praise. Not to sing the blues. Throw a pity party. Your obligation is to pray and praise. And suddenly shows up when praise and prayer fills the area where you are. And people around you need you 
to pray and praise. Because there's some other people that you're close to. They were close to other prisoners who could hear them in the worship service. They were close to other. There was other people going through the same thing that you're going through. But when they opened their mouth and started praying, when they opened their mouth and started praising, it affected the atmosphere where other people who was going through the same thing, they got set free by somebody not singing a sad song, but singing a bragging song on how good God is. Well, pastor, you don't know my family. Here's what I know. People close to you get affected by prayer. People close to you get affected by praise. You want to change where you are? Open your mouth and pray something. You want an act of God to show up? You want and suddenly to rock your world? Pray something. Praise him. Brag on him in the middle of your captivity. Crazy stuff, isn't it? But I keep trying, and I keep telling, and I keep talking, and I keep, and I keep, and I keep. Here's what you need to keep doing. Keep praying and keep praising. I've done everything I can. How much time do you spend praying? Now, look, prayer is not so much opening your mouth and talking to God as it is as listening. I tell you what. If I called my wife on the phone... And said, I'm going to meet you tonight in the living room. And we're going to have a conversation. Meet me there at 7 o'clock. And when I get there, we open up the conversation like this. Dear Heavenly Kara, thank you for this day. And by the way, I need you to do the laundry. I need you to clean the kitchen. I need you to run the vacuum. The dogs got to go out. You got to feed them dogs. Don't forget you need to wash the dogs. Um, don't forget there's windows. Spring cleaning is here. And, and you, know, you don't have to do it often, but at least do it this time. And, and then tonight, make sure that the bed is made. Make sure my pillows are fluffed. Make sure the sheets are clean. You can do whatever you want with me. That's up to you. But I need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And, and then I get up off that couch and I go about my night. Oh, in Jesus' name, amen. What kind of prayer life would that be? And don't we do the same thing to God? Oh, come on. This is good preaching. Dear God. <laughs> and we just give him this laundry list of stuff. In Jesus' name, amen. And the whole time, God's not... He doesn't want you to reach out for his hand. His hand has already been extended. He wants us to reach out to his heart. Because the enemy knows if you pray and praise, it releases not only the fire and glory, but it releases an inevitable event. The acts of God. So that's why when we pray and praise, you get distracted. Your phone don't ring all day until you start to read your Bible. You're wired all day long like you've had 100 cups of coffee. You lay in bed, get ready to read your Bible. You're out before you open the first page. <laughs> the enemy wants us not to pray and to praise because the enemy is smart enough to know I'm not allowed in there. Okay, so if I can keep you out of there, you begin to get weak spiritually. And then you start buying into the lies that I'm going to tell you. You know the lies that I think I'm catching a cold. 
And you start saying, I think I'm catching a cold. And the devil says, and you are. Achoo. You start saying things because you forget that the power of life and death is connected to your tongue. But if you would have spent some time in prayer and praise, when the, when the little achoo showed up, you would have said, no, 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 no. You are trespassing. This is the temple of God, and sickness and disease is not allowed here. I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. And suddenly shows up and shakes the foundation of everything holding you captive and sets people around you free. Watch. You got to understand the jailer, if he would have lost one prisoner, they would have killed him. He looks up and everybody's gone. <laughs> There's some jailers in your life that are right on the edge because he grabbed that sword. Watch. When you get set free, you can rejoice for a while, but you got a ministry to, 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 to take care of. Watch what happens. That jailer was getting ready to kill himself. It's in the rest of the chapter. He drew his sword and was going to kill himself. And Paul said, hey, 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 hey. We're all still here. That ought to be the battle cry of every person in this house. I am still here. See, the devil, you, you thought you had me, but I'm still here. And I'm more free right now than I was 10 minutes ago. The Bible says that all the prisoners and even the guard holding them captive because someone took time to pray and praise, they were all one to the Lord and gave their heart and life to Jesus. Wow. God took a couple of boys, been bruised, been skinned up, got some scars, falsely accused, misunderstood. Put whatever adjective you're feeling right now, right there. And God used them to set captives free and to save the captor. People in position of authority to do you harm pales in comparison. They lose their authority to keep you bound. Y'all, you picking up what I'm laying down? Isn't this powerful? Your praise and your prayer enacts acts of God. Let me read this to you again. An act of God, the legal definition is this. An event that directly and exclusively results from the occurrence of a natural cause that could not have been prevented by the exercise of foresight or caution. It is an inevitable action. Watch. What is our new nature? Our old nature is to gripe and moan, complain about everything. Our new nature, when we come to Jesus, is to pray and praise and to worship. We were created to worship him. We were created to uh, praise him. We were created to rejoice in him. We were created to walk and to live in the fire and the glory of God. We were created that the acts of God follow us around everywhere we go. We don't follow the signs. They follow us. This is powerful. So this definition says this. A natural cause that could have that that could not have been prevented by the exercise of foresight or caution it is an inevitable accident really it's not an accident in the kingdom it's just inevitable period it is powerful I'm talking about the acts of God I'm going to share this and we're going to close Prayer and praise creates the end suddenly moment and shakes the foundation of what is holding you captive. Chains fall off and the prison doors are opened because prayer and praise initiates the acts of God. Now back to what I first said. Every one of the people on that panel during that pastor's meeting said the number one problem we have in our church is the praise team. Does it make sense why? Because if the enemy can get in to these ministers of praise, and see, I'm not talking about here on Sunday morning. 
I'm talking about where you live. If he can affect your praise Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday night, all day long, and he gets in and, and, and see these ministers of the gospel up here, these ministers, these singers, these players, the, 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 this band, if the enemy can get in because he knows, he knows, and suddenly is connected to prayer and praise. So he gets in and he tries to stir it up. And he tries to create. And, and I'm not talking about when they get to church. I'm talking about before they ever get in the car to head this way. They're already dealing with hell by the half acre. <laughs> stuff going wrong with the house. Stuff going wrong with the office. Stuff going wrong with your car. Stuff, the stuff going on. And you get distracted. And then you come here and you just try to praise your way out. But I want you to know something. You need to count it all joy when you find yourself under attack. Because the enemy only attacks what is advancing. So praise team, listen to me. I want you to come. I want all the praise team just to come and just stand right here. Stand right here. All the praise team. All the praise team. All the praise team. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And we have others. Those who might be watching by television, internet. Just, just, just stand right here and look at me. Come around. Look at me. Just look at me. There's other praise. We have other singers. Nikki's not here. Uh, Kibby's not here. Jeff. Jeff's not here right now. But I want you to know something. I want you to understand the weight of what you do. Understand how significant this is. It's not for entertainment value. Trust me, I could bring in entertainers. We're looking for praisers and prayers. And it starts at your house. It starts in your car. It starts at your job. It starts in your individual life. When we get here, this is corporate. What makes it powerful is when it becomes who we are inside the walls of our house. So you can expect an all-out attack in every area of your life. You can expect an all-out attack because you're leading a crazy bunch of people. Singers and musicians are divas. We like things the way we like them. My monitor's not loud enough. It's too loud. I need this more. I need that more. It's too high. It's too low. I'm not singing good today. I sounded great today. I'm not playing good today. I'm playing great today. We are divas, baby, trust me. I are one. And you get to manage it all. hear me praise is not an option Amen. it's a directive Amen. and it should be happening every day in your life and I'm I'm not correcting you I'm encouraging you right. should be happening every day of your life not singing the blues not singing about the scars not singing about how bad things are your choice of words should be about praise prayer and pray because when you get here and the enemy's been working like hell on the rest of these guys. They're going to need some leaders to show up in the camp who knows what it's like to be held captive, falsely accused, all the stuff, who know how to open your mouth and praise something. Know how to open your mouth and praise something. It is important. The longevity of this ministry starts with the praise team. Amen. This is powerful. It is an impact. As goes the praise, so goes the service. You ever notice that? When the praise and worship's really good, it's like, whoo, we didn't even need preaching. See, what I'm telling them, they're, they're the face. But I could very well tell every one of you the same thing. That's right. You with me? See, kids, it's okay to praise God at school, on the bus, in the car. I don't care that you're listening to... I don't care about that. Just give them Jesus. Dress it up the way you want to, but make the message matter. Mom and Daddy, let them do it. That's not my favorite kind of music. So? 
It's the message. See, we got to understand it's about prayer and praise. And it's not just about a laundry list of stuff. It's about worshiping God and bragging on God where you are. Am I making sense? Guys, it's not about your laundry list of I need you to do's. It's about God, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to praise you right here where I am. I know I'm uncomfortable. They were sitting in those stocks with their hands forward and their feet forward. They look like a magnet turned on its side. Hands forward, feet forward. It was not a comfortable place for them to be. But their comfort did not control how they praised God. So today, I just want to pray for you guys. I'm going to pray. Timmy, just play something. And I'm going to come pray for you. And then we're going to come, we're going to come into agreement. Because anytime disunity starts to slip in it's like a cancer and you got to understand the significance of what you're doing it's not just hey brother I play the Congos man I'm on the praise team hey no 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 I'm beating my drum for the king of kings my hands are making a song unto the Lord I'm making sense this is so important to the moving forward of every service in Jesus name I'm gonna pray let me pray with you right here in Jesus' name. So, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Father, we just surrender all to you. Help us to realize the importance of what comes out of our mouth every day, every moment. Help us to live in the prayer and the praise. Help us to enact in suddenly. Help us to live in that and suddenly moment. Help us to witness foundations cracking right before our eyes. Help us to experience chains falling off prison doors opening up being set free in every area that we can declare we are still here in Jesus name in Jesus name father we release unity father in the name of Jesus help us to realize how important we are in the kingdom work our kingdom assignment father help us to praise you help us to pray and praise use us father individually to release the and suddenly moments in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we release and suddenly we release the earth-shaking moments that set captives free hallelujah we come against every stronghold that binds us every spirit of doubt and confusion and 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 all the things that are connected to discourage us and distract us we come against it right now and we pray you we pray to you and we praise you we brag on you God we brag on you God use us use us father in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you father we thank you father for this praise team we thank you Lord for the songs that come out of our mouth we pray father in Jesus name that this becomes more than a song but it becomes a way of life for us every action every reaction Father, that it brings you glory, that it brings praise out of our mouth, that we are bragging on you in every moment without delay. Father, in Jesus' name, I release and suddenly right now, and suddenly right now, we release and suddenly right now, and suddenly right now, every prison door is set free. You are set free. Every captive is set free. Every, every chain is falling off of you. Every prison door is, is opening right now. Every chain is being broken. Every prison door is being opened. Right now, every chain is falling off and every prison door is opening. The foundations have been destroyed and you are set free. You are set free. You are set free. You are set free by the power of God. Amen. And amen. And amen. Vertical praise means something. And from this moment on, from this moment on, it'll always be about Him. It always has, I know. But I want you to know the importance of prayer and praise. In your world, thank you. Thank you for letting me pray with you. In your world, your day should start with prayer and praise. In your world, your day should start with worship. In your world, you got to make time for this, guys. It is so important because the fire and the glory of God, is, it's all connected. It's all connected. You can sing the blues. It's an easier song to sing. It's only C, F, and G. Real easy. It's a three-chord song. You go to sing worship. Now we're adding Ds and A minors and 
all kinds of color to the music and things just start flowing out of us and we're not singing the blues anymore but we start singing things like holy 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come praise God see that worship should start at your house not at this one this is good isn't it so today lift your hand for the blessing if you're in this room today and you need an end suddenly moment I decree and declare over this house today mm. okay you just need to begin to pray and praise right there right where you are Holy Spirit said if they'll begin to praise me if they'll begin to pray and praise I will shake their foundation I am NOT a respecter of persons I will shake the foundation and what is holding you captive must let go it is inevitable prayer and praise just begin to do it right there right where you are just begin to pray just begin to praise right there right where you are father we release the fire and the glory we release an act of God right now father by faith every foundation of the enemy is shaken it is broken every captive must be set free every prisoner must walk out free right now in Jesus name and we declare to all of hell we are still here in Jesus mighty name hallelujah 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 Lord you are a good God your mercy endures forever you are a good God you set the captives free you crown you crumble the foundations of the enemy you are a good God and suddenly and suddenly in Jesus mighty name thank you father thank you father thank you father it is inevitable <laughs> it is inevitable you can't stop it prayer and praise initiates it Shh. praise God praise God